Um, so, um, first few words about me. Um, I have been a PyPy core developer for uh, about uh, six years now. Uh, and, uh, well, it's basically my job to, uh, to work on uh, open source and um, uh, or to uh, do co consulting uh, related to it. Um, well, I have a mail and a Twitter, how original. Um, so, um, this talk, um, so before diving into um, C extensions and how we support them in PyPy, which is what's called uh, CPYX, um, just a quick introduction to PyPy and um, a few words about uh, what we are doing at the moment, especially uh, because um, this is, I think, the only PyPy talk at the conference. So, uh, PyPy, um, that's our elevator pitch. PyPy is a fast, compliant alternative implementation of the Python language. So, um, what it means, um, well, First, it means that um, we run Python programs. But um, more than that, uh, we try to be compliant with, well, the specification of the Python language, which, as you probably know, is just the source code of CPython. Um, so that causes a few issues. But nevertheless, we uh, manage to um, uh, to do that and um, to provide a um, very decent uh, speed uh, for Python programs. So um, to um, have an idea of the um, architecture of uh, PyPy, I like to start from um, the architecture of uh, CPython, which is a, a bit simpler. So, um, well, CPython is written in C, as, uh, you know, and um, in the uh, Python executable, you have two main parts. Uh, you have the compiler that takes the source code, turns it into bytecode, and you have the uh, bytecode interpreter that takes each bytecode and um, runs a specific operation corresponding to the bytecode. Uh, PyPy, it's uh, quite similar. Um, except that, um, well, in the uh, interpreter, um, on top of the bytecode interpreter, we have a just-in-time compiler that uh, works by um, observing um, hot loops in, uh, in the code, or, well, any uh, sort of uh, code that runs often, and then uh, this code is um, traced um, analyzed and um, so that um, it gets uh, runtime information on the, on the types and uh, with this uh, it, uh, it emits uh, optimized uh, machine code. Um, now the, um, um, the magic uh, in um, in PyPy comes uh, mostly from the uh, our Python uh, toolchain uh, up there, uh, which um, generates uh, more or less automatically the uh, the just time compiler and also adds uh, other features that work with uh, with the JIT, like the uh, uh, the GC um, and um, the other. Uh, good thing about uh, this tool chain is that uh, the language uh, we use uh, is uh, our Python, which um, is uh, a subset of Python, so uh, we can um, easily uh, test uh, the interpreter. Um, now, um, another difference uh, between um, CPython and, uh, and PyPy, um, it's uh, to do with the memory management. So um, in uh, CPython, it's, um, well, it's just a standard uh, C application. So it uh, uh, uses um, just malloc and, uh, and free and uh, all that, which is not ideal for uh, an interpreter that uh, tends to allocate small objects in random places all the time. Um, 
and uh, um, and also um, uh, due to this uh, simplistic model, um, CPython needs to uh, update um, reference counts all the time. Um, and uh, in contrast, PyPy has uh, quite a performant um, um, garbage collector, which is specially tuned for uh, Python. Um, and uh, that way, and also it uh, it works well with the uh, with the JIT, um, and uh, well, and there's um, the uh, an observable uh, user dif uh, difference, which is uh, when uh, at which time does uh, the location happen. Um, in PyPy, since we have a garbage collector, it's um, the allocation happens when the object is collected by the garbage collector, uh, whereas in CPython, it's um, when the reference counts uh, hit zero, uh, which uh, happens because you've t uh, told uh, um, uh, the interpreter to uh, decrement the reference count. So in CPython, you know when uh, the allocation happens, usually. But, um, <clears throat> and um, another and well, the most interesting difference between PyPy and CPython, it's uh, speed. So um, people uh, often say that uh, PyPy provides uh, magic speed ups, and it, uh, it often does, but um, it can do uh, more than that. Like, it's true that, uh, well, if you're lucky, you can have your program that used to run on CPython, try PyPy, and uh, cool, it's twice faster. Sounds great, but uh, actually, if you, um, in such a case, if you try to optimize for, for PyPy, uh, you can get your code to be four times faster than uh, on CPython. So um, why stop at just running PyPy? If you uh, want to reap the benefits, optimize. And um, well, as usual, uh, if you want to optimize, you first need to have um, uh, good benchmarks, and um, so a, a good b benchmark is something you um, really care about. So it's not a micro benchmark, uh, it's not a test, it's something that uh, matches the way you really use um, your code. And um, once you have a benchmark, uh, well, uh, you should use a profiler to find uh, the um, the hot parts uh, of the code. And um, on PyPy, there's uh, basically only one uh, profiler that um, uh, understands um, PyPy. Uh, it's called uh, VMProf. And um, once you've done that, then uh, you can actually um, um, modify um, the code and uh, a few um, pointers uh, for doing that. Um, first, um, you need to uh, avoid um, dynamic features at, uh, at runtime, or at least in inner loops. So it's fine to use uh, meta programming as much as you want um, before you run your main computation, but uh, in the inner loop, there should be none of that. Um, and, um, but um, what um, a side benefit of uh, having a JIT is that uh, you can uh, use uh, function calls because they, uh, because function calls are uh, usually inlined by uh, by the JIT. So, um, uh, well, so you're free to structure your, your code, uh, and uh, there are a few uh, optimizations uh, that uh, you need to be aware of uh, in order to to hit them and uh, and and or to avoid disabling them by accident. So um, the um, one is that um, um, attribute access on instances is um, well optimized. Um, the, um, uh, effectively, it's as if uh, every um, class had a, a slots declaration and uh, you don't need to um, look up uh, an attribute name in a dict. And um, the uh, other thing is that we have what we call a list strategy. So when you have a list that contains uh, a homogeneous list containing built-in types like ints or floats, uh, then access will be very fast. It's as if you're um, 
uh, uh, indexing uh, a C array. Um, so um, let's uh, have a few words about the current status. Uh, I'll start by uh, Python 3. So uh, we've, um, uh, we, have a, uh, we had our first uh, fully supported uh, release of, um, uh, well, of any Py, uh, PyPy3 uh, last Christmas. Um, the latest version uh, was released uh, in April. Um, so we, uh, what we support is uh, 3.5 at the moment. And uh, it's, uh, well, there's, there are still uh, things uh, missing on Windows, but it's um, um, fully supported on uh, Linux, Mac, uh, BSD. And um, so uh, what we're uh, working on, it's uh, 3.6. We are about halfway, um, which is always a hard uh, thing to say, but... I hope there's not that much uh, left. Uh, at least the main um, uh, syntax features are there. Now it's only the details. And, um, and uh, for Python 3, we uh, need uh, to work on uh, more optimizations for things that, um, well, for things that didn't exist in uh, Python 2. Um, like uh, the fact that we have uh, Unicode uh, everywhere, um, async stuff is, uh, we need to find ways uh, to make it a bit better. It's decent, but uh, it could be better. Um, and, um, well, that's it for Python 3. Uh, Python uh, 2 had a release at the same time as the Python 3. Um, and um, so uh, in this release, apart from the... Um, well, um, yeah, in this release, we mainly had uh, a few uh, incremental uh, improvements. So, um, well, I'll, I'll remind you um, that um, CFFI is still um, the, the best way to, um, to talk to, uh, to C code, and um, it keeps being updated with uh, every release of uh, PyPy. But uh, the main hi uh, highlight of the um, last uh, release was the... Um, uh, the improvements to, um, C, uh, to C extension compatibility and speed. And <clears throat> so uh, now um, you can uh, pip install uh, the main uh, scientific libraries. Um, and uh, we have um, uh, a few um, wheels um, that you can check because they um, are not, uh, you have no uh, PyPy wheels on uh, PyPI. Uh, because of issues with many Linux. And <clears throat> so um, if you use PyPy, uh, check out uh, this um, uh, website and uh, you'll get uh, binary wheels. <clears throat> so with this, um, I um, start the main part of the talk, which is um, CPYX. Um, so, CPYX, um, well, what is uh, CPYX really? Um, as a user, um, you could just think of it as um, Python.h for PyPy. When you want to, uh, when you need to, uh, to compile a C extension, uh, you um, uh, link it against, um, uh, you compile it against uh, Python.h, uh, well, you do that on CPython, and on PyPy, you do exactly the same. Uh, and um, with this uh, Python.h, um, the compiler will know uh, where to find the uh, actual um, uh, C function uh, you want to, um, to call from, your, uh, from the extension. So um, what's uh, in CPyX? Well, this uh, Python.h is... Um, uh, mostly uh, generated um, during um, uh, the PyPy uh, build, and uh, we have uh, a bit of C code uh, that, well, sort of handwritten C code, which is mostly um, a copy from uh, CPython, uh, but um, most of the uh, implementation comes from um, uh, our, um, our Python uh, implementation. 
And, um, well, what does it look like? It looks like this. So um, this is uh, our Python code. This is uh, the code that implements uh, PyList set item. And um, if uh, you've already looked at um, the CPython uh, source, uh, you'll notice that it's mostly the same logic. Uh, well, we have some error checking, and then uh, we uh, find uh, where the, um, uh, well, we fetch the place where um, we store uh, some item in the list and we update. And, and we do uh, a decref because uh, the old object is not um, referenced anymore. So um, this is, well, this looks quite simple. And this is, uh, the good thing is that it uh, is debuggable and testable because it is um, using our Python. Uh, however, um, this hides uh, a lot of complexity, which is uh, in this uh, decorator at the top. And uh, this decorator at the top does all the magic of um, moving between uh, the C world and the R Python world. And uh, there's uh, quite a lot of uh, thing to do, like, like all that and that. And <clears throat> um, so what um, do we need to do um, to make uh, CPIST work? Um, so we have uh, two uh, very different worlds. Um, when, uh, when we have a C extension that tries to talk to the uh, PyPy interpreter, um, so the implementation languages are different, but um, this means that the uh, internal um, object structures are um, different. Uh, we have a um, completely different uh, memory model in, uh, uh, inside PyPy. Um, we have uh, managed memory, we have a garbage collector that can uh, move the uh, objects around. And, um, but uh, that's uh, quite uh, incompatible with uh, the C model where you uh, refer to things using uh, pointers and pointers are basically uh, locations in memory. So uh, if things move around, C code um, gets confused. And, um, in PyPy, we have also um, well a lot more control on uh, on what's going on. Um, we have um, exceptions that can uh, propagate, and um, so we have internal exceptions inside the interpreter that are used, uh, um, for instance, to implement the uh, user level uh, exceptions. And uh, but on uh, inside the C extension, there's uh, well. There are no uh, exceptions uh, in C, so um, um, extensions need to uh, set a thing called an error indicator that the interpreter needs to check from time to time. Also, C extensions uh, need to um, um, deal with the ref counts uh, because you, um, well, you need uh, to know when an object can be deallocated and um, but uh, inside PyPy, we have a uh, garbage collector, so we don't worry about that at all. And um, so, uh, how do we uh, bridge this? And uh, the main idea is to um, have um, these uh, C objects linked to um, Python objects. So, they, um, so that they are basically just uh, proxies for for the um, actual object, and um, the specific mechanism is just this line here. So uh, if you uh, if you know um, C Python, uh, you'll notice that this up PyPy link is the uh, uh, only difference um, with what uh, C Python does. And this uh, up PyPy link uh, allows um, um, the uh, allows the CPyx layer to uh, query the uh, the memory manager in order to uh, find um, the um, 
um, the PyPy object. And um, well, and uh, then it's um, uh, just a matter of uh, well, it's a small matter of uh, programming to um, implement all the uh, C semantics. So you need to uh, remember uh, your increfs and decrefs. Uh, when uh, you are implementing uh, API functions in uh, our Python. Um, and, but um, there are more problems, like uh, what uh, do you do um, when, um, uh, if you want to call um, a C uh, function from Python, which is the whole point of having a C extension, and um, and um, so that's why we, ha we have these uh, magic decorators that handle the uh, transformation uh, magically. And um, basically, um, yeah, we had uh, uh, levels of uh, indirection. Anytime we, uh, anytime we need to cross a boundary, uh, anytime uh, there's um, some, uh, something to check, uh, because we are back from the sea world where anything can happen. Um, so that's um, the general idea. Um, but, uh, well, you probably know uh, the rest of this um, quote, or actually folk saying, um, which is that uh, all problems in computer science can be solved by another level of indirection, except the problem of too many layers of uh, indirection. And uh, we've um, recently noticed that we had uh, too many layers of uh, indirection. So this was um, last year uh, in uh, Cape Town. And uh, we've um, started to um, uh, improve uh, the performance of uh, CPIX. So um, as I said, um, crossing uh, this boundary uh, is um, uh, it's expensive. And uh, because we have this magic uh, going on, uh, we uh, do it even without realizing, uh, because we can just, we don't need to explicitly convert between the C world and the PyPy Pi world. It happens behind the scenes. So um, we um, need to be um, more careful uh, about that. Um, and um, by being more careful, we uh, can remove uh, a lot of, um, of this back and forth because it's, um, in, a, in many cases, it turned out to be um, um, completely useless. And, um, uh, well, it's an extension of uh, this idea, uh, which is uh, when you have uh, an operation that can uh, happen completely on the, on the seaside, then we should um, just implement it in C and never uh, cross the boundary. So, well, this requires some uh, care as well because, um, the, uh, because of the different under underlying assumptions of, um, uh, of PyPy and of uh, the sea world, but it's possible. And, um, uh, and well, we've started doing it. It's not complete, but the results are here. So um, in blue, it's uh, just uh, CPython as a reference. Green is um, PyPy before these uh, optimizations and red is uh, after. Uh, and this is a, a bunch of um, rather silly micro-benchmark, so that uh, we just check the, um, um, well, the overhead of uh, each uh, specific operation. So um, we used to be uh, between four and six times um, slower than uh, CPython, and now we are between the same speed and 50% uh, faster. Uh, so there's uh, hope for um, the speed of um, CPIX, and um, and uh, um, the future. Well, it's to um, 
continue uh, working on um, on this. Um, we can, um, so there were a few uh, red bars that uh, where we were still a lot slower than uh, CPython. It's probably uh, doable to uh, be faster than CPython in all cases. It just requires work. And, um, uh, and uh, well, we have um, PyPy uh, open space uh, this, this afternoon at two, so if you want to um, come discuss with your own PyPy problems or your ideas. And um, well, that's it. I'm waiting for your, your questions. Any more questions? Were there any C extensions that um, uh, this PyExt was written in mind for, or is it just for the general case? And does that make sense? Uh, Did, uh, so, uh, uh, pff, no, it's for the uh, general case. Um, well, there are extensions we've uh, been using as um, test, and also because. They are extensions we really uh, we would really like uh, to um, to make compatible with PyPy, and well, it, it was um, uh, mainly uh, NumPy, and uh, it's now um, um, it fully supports uh, PyPy now. I think. Um, Can you say which rule? Uh, no, because I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Harris One. Uh, when will PyPy drop support for Python 2? Um, the current official answer is never. We'll Any reasons for that? Um, well, um, a lot of uh, our users are still uh, on uh, Python 2. And uh, our, um, our tool chain is uh, implemented in Python 2, so uh, um, that's not a motivation. And, um, uh, and also, as um, language uh, implementers, we uh, uh, are uh, quite happy to have something that doesn't change. And um, so, uh, well, that's... These are all the reasons why uh, PyPy likes uh, uh, Python 2. Um, and, um, well, we see no, no real reason to, uh, to drop uh, Python 2. We um, have um, um, two, uh, two branches uh, for Python 2 and Python 3 that share a lot of code. So it's not a major burden to keep supporting uh, Python 2 either. I have a question about R Python. Yes. Uh, how is it related to C Python? Is it a subset or something like that? Um, well, it is a subset. Um, so um, it um, you can run R Python code uh, as Python code, and that's what we do a lot uh, for testing, and uh, that's uh, quite convenient. But um, the, uh, but the exact definition of uh, R Python is just the subset of uh, Python that can be understood by the tool chain. Uh, so what about Cyton? Does this uh, extension uh, compatibility layer make us uh, make PyPy compatible with Cyton? Uh, yes, yes. Um, Cyton is um, um, fully, well, I won't say fully because there's uh, one piece of code in Cyton that's uh, CPython specific, but uh, apart uh, from that, uh, Cyton is uh, fully supported and uh, extensions uh, that uh, use uh, Cyton uh, now work on, uh, on PyPy. Um, Scikit-learn, uh, which uses a lot of Cyton, uh, now has uh, experimental support for PyPy, for instance. And the LXML has supported uh, PyPy for uh, years. 
Thank you very much.